actually, at 17, wanted to get into a religious debate with not me, with my uncle. He wanted One to generation die. ahead of me. <laughs> Do you know they chopped that little fool so bad she never brought him back around again? He probably was mad at her in the car. He's like, why you bring me over here with these people? No, she mad at him asking, why you act so stupid? Because, <laughs> you know, this is a black boy household. And I keep telling you, I'm the second nicest of you with not just me, but one generation of my uncle. My thing is, how oh, do you no. think at 17? Because Tommy, how you doing? You ain't even invited to the table. So how you think you finna, if you is sitting at the table, don't speak. Don't speak. Don't make any sudden motion. Anything no, can kill just you. just look and listen because you ain't got no opinion here. So he you got know, shot for everything hear. he was ever worth and he ain't ever made a reappearance. No. Nothing. <laughs> Eight years ago. He's been behind his show back up since. And ain't coming back up. She might have dropped him already. She dropped him. <laughs> Look, you can't bring him around. No. Where are you going to take him to? Yeah, no, no family gathering. You can't come back that way, that way. No. And her dad just as bad as mine, so good Lord, no. But they must, they probably, y'all are probably old, so if he cut his hair and changed his clothes a little bit, y'all would think he's a whole new person. Could he change his personality? No, no. No. He'd be still true. I forgot what little nickname we get. One second back, it was some kind of little. We gave him a little nickname. We started picking that. Like, get this fool out of here. <laughs> As a reminder, folks, let's see. What is it? Wednesday night? We got two events coming this week between myself and Jay Parker. Tonight, Wednesday night, 9 p.m., we have, what is it? A Wealth Fundamentals webinar, which is free. A free Wealth Fundamentals webinar. What are these? What is this wealth? Are you understanding your money enough to protect yourself and take care of it and make it grow so when you get it, you can keep it and make it grow like it's supposed to? Are you doing that? That's Wealth Fundamentals. If you don't know that, folks, we have a free webinar tonight at 9 p.m. Tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. 9 p.m. tonight Eastern Time. It's free. All you have to do is call me and I'll give you the code for it. My number, 704 806. I'm about to type it on the screen. 0502. And I type at the same speed I write. 704-806-0502. Did I have a typo? We got it right. I think. Yes, right. Look at you. So we have to look at it. So call me, folks, and I can either log into that because it's free. There's no reason for you not to know. And what's my phrase? I refuse to lose because I simply did not know. I refuse to lose because I had information available to me that I simply did not access. I'm actually writing that down. Barely. That's enough. I got what it means. <laughs> I refuse to lose because I had information available to me that I simply did not access. That means that I had the information there, but I was too trifling and sorry to access it. Therefore, I lost. I lost money. I lost time. I lost Respect, I was whatever, because the information was right there, and I couldn't show up for something free to get it. Mm -hmm. So show up there for free. That's tonight at 9, Wealth Fundamentals. Tomorrow night, which is Thursday night at 8 p.m., this is Jay Parker, Jay Parker Network. He's doing a foreclosure, free foreclosure webinar. Mm -hmm. Free foreclosure webinar. It's free. Just like Wednesday night was free, it's free. To get access to the code, all you have to do is call me, 704-806-0502. I'm on the screen, 704-806-0502. The reason these two seminars have to be tag teams, because if you haven't gotten past wealth, past wealth fundamentals, you don't know what to do with real estate. You're wasting your time. Question. Yes, ma'am. It starts at 9. Um, if people log in, say somebody's running late. Somebody log in at 9.15. Can they call in at 9.15 and join or do they have to be in by 9 to be on They can call in at 9.15 and join. All right, cool. And I will tell you Don's rule, though. I'm not saying though, be late. I'm just saying. If nobody's on, because sometimes we have calls and nobody's on, I will stay on and live for 10 minutes. If ain't nobody there, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're 9.15 and ain't nobody there, I'm done. If you're after 9.15, we're going to keep on going anyway. I just hear a beep going in and you can speak. Let me know you're there and we keep on going. Mm -hmm. We want to slow down for you. We're good with that. That's, to, that's tonight at 9. Welcome, Miss Audra. And for Jay, the foreclosure, that's tomorrow night, Thursday at 8 p.m. So tonight, Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Tomorrow night, Thursday, foreclosure, 8 p.m. They're both free. Call me. I can send you the code to them. And if, you, if you're a mellow, you're millennial, just text me. Yeah. Text me and say, send me the logins to those two webinars. I'll send you a text straight back. 
I do request at least send me a first name so I know who the heck I'm talking to. Can <laughs> yeah. you do that much? I ain't got to know your last name. Send me a first name <laughs> so I know who I'm talking to. But get that set, folks, because there's no excuse for you not to have it. I refuse to lose because I had information available to me that I simply did not access. Get that, folks. Don't lose because the information was there and you were too trifling to access. And I call it trifling. I probably should, but I did. It's time for our <laughs> main topic of the day. A person, a place, a time, and action. Everyone's appointed a person, a place, and a time where your success is to be built. Everybody, a person, a place, and a time. The question is, did you make your appointment, number one? That's the first question. Number two, if you did make your appointment, did you take action? That's the second question. Mm -hmm. So let me tell my story. I'll tell on Don first. <laughs> I will tell on Don first. Do you know, Mel, that I came one phone call away from just about missing my appointed person, place, and time. One phone call? If it hadn't been one, one phone call, you and I wouldn't be sitting right here right now. Well, thank God for telephones. One phone call. Because, <laughs> let's see, I've been in the police department, been a sergeant, actually a new sergeant, sergeant less than a year, and I actually got 30 days off. And I was pissed off to the highest level of pissedivity. 30 days off that you wanted or didn't want? No, I did not want it. <laughs> I was suspended for 30 days. It changed my district, everything. And, and, you know, the police department, you could take half of it vacation time. So I lost 15 vacation days, but I take 15 days active. So that's 15 five, days without pay, right? 15 days without pay. Mm -hmm. And that's actually three work weeks, five days per week. That's three work weeks I was out of work. Mm -hmm. So one day I went to the mountain. One day, one week I went to the mountain. One week I went to the sea. The next week I went to Chapel Hill, Avamana. I went in mm -hmm. town for three weeks and came back and I was pissed off. Went from the north side down to the south side. I was pissed off. And I said, I will be able to text to replace you. And I didn't know what, I didn't know how. But I said, nobody's going to have that amount of power, me, power over me ever again. And within two months, I was invited to my first ever business meeting. Shouts out to T-Mac, Terry Mac, one of my officers. He invited me to that meeting. And I told him I'd be there. It was about a week out. Well, about two days before the meeting, I decided I wasn't going. I said, this woman can't teach me nothing about money. I ain't showing up at that meeting. <laughs> and T-Mac followed proper protocol, which was one day before the meeting. You always call and follow him and say, hey, I'm black. Well, he calls me black for sure. They black. You going to be there? And I made up my mind not to go, but because he Be called. Told, yeah. I said, all right. I said, I'll be there. My word is my bond. I will get there. Yeah, that up. meeting changed my entire life. That meeting started me in business, which led to Icon Success Today and this radio show right now. It mm -hmm. was that meeting that started it all. From that day forward, I sat there. I made my appointment. Now, I wasn't polite as y'all been with me. I was actually ignorant. <laughs> I-G-N-A-N-T. Why I say ignorant? I was ignorant. Ignorant, as we said down south. That's a phrase for you, order ignorant. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't have that in Brooklyn. Order from Brooklyn. They don't have ignorant. We got ignorant down south. I was ignorant, which means that I sat there and gave that lady a police stare for 45 minutes. And just <laughs> stared at her. She'd ask a question, what do you mean? Every now and then I nod, every now and then I write a note down on the paper, and I just stared at her for 45 minutes. She told me later it was the toughest presentation she ever, had, she ever did because I wouldn't give her any feedback whatsoever. I wouldn't respond verbally. I barely even gave eye recognition. I wouldn't ask the questions. I just looked. Just being mean. So it seemed, just being mean. <laughs> but I was not just being mean, folks. Let me tell you what had happened. What had happened was, her name was Helen Blocker Adams. I call her HBA for short, out of Augusta, Georgia. You can look up Helen Blocker Adams in Augusta right now. You see her, she's all over the place. Mm -hmm. Because she, yes, 20 some years later, she's still all over the place down there. And crazy at it. Look, when I sat down with her, I knew within the first three minutes that I was completely outclassed and lost. She lost me within... Three minutes. Three minutes. Now, the only way she could figure out that I was lost is if I spoke. So I physically sat there and held my mouth shut. To see, you know, what you was thinking, what you had to say, where you was. Because if I spoke, she'd know exactly how lost I was because I was that embarrassed. So I physically held my mouth shut. 
when she got done, she said, what do you think? I said, well, if people are talking junk about you, that means you're competition, so I'm okay. Let me get back with you in a couple of days. She said, what are you going to do for a couple of days? I said, check you out. <laughs> that sounds so sweet, check you out, right? I'm about as ignorant as a three dollar bill. I don't know how to check anybody out in business. <laughs> it was just a defense that to check you out just sounded so smart check to say. You out just to I don't know a... what check you out means. I don't know what's up and what's you down because know I was I G N A N T. I couldn't even spell check you out. <laughs> so I'm saying like, but it sounded good to say check you out because I had to give me some distance because I was outclassed that badly. I called her two nights later. Me and T Mac, we were both working midnight shift on the police department. He's one of my officers. Both working midnight shift. We called her at 3 o'clock in the morning. Both on midnight shift. She answered the phone at 3 o'clock in the morning. Surprisingly. She said, Helen, black is in. 3 a.m., two days later, started my business career that changed everything about my life from that one meeting. I came one phone call from just about missing that meeting. So what did you think about for them two days? Number one, how lost I was. That's a good question. I never had them before. I like that. How lost I was. How it's going to be a major change in my life and what others think about that change. That was a concern. What would mm -hmm. others think about that change? Because I was going to come in a different way they had never seen before. I had to be able to break to them. I'm about to make a change. And that was actually a concern of mine for two days. In that two days, I found the people that were important to me and told them I'm about to make a change. I'm walking in a different direction. I'll tell you about it when I can, but know there's going to be a change. I made that move within the two days. Yeah. They were already notified before I made my change. So you can start adjusting your life to it. Mm-hmm. And two days later, two nights later, 3 a.m., <laughs> the decision was made, and I called them and we set it up online, did it that night, and got it done. That's been the change that changed my entire life. I wonder what the heck she was doing. She was up 3 o'clock in the morning. Working people don't sleep. That's true. And, in fact, let's see. At the time, she had written her first book, just written her first book. She had a radio show and running her own business. Oh, no, she wasn't sleeping at all. And guess what? I'm her child. I've written three books, I have a radio show, and running her own business. <laughs> 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 okay, full circle, right? Full circle. Because I made that appointment. I did not miss my appointment, number one, and I took action. The question is, folks, did you make your appointment? Well, and most people summarily missed their appointment. Go ahead, Mel. The good thing is, like, when you said, when I asked you, you know, what you was thinking about for the two days, like most people, I'm pretty sure you, you know, like you said, you had to realize that, hey, this is going to be a change. This is going to bring something different to my life. And at that point, within those two days, that's where most people get scared and run away. But you didn't. You adjusted your life to the new situation. You're like, hey, this is different, but I'm going to, at well, the end of the I day, was embarrassed I'm going to make it get out. She kicked my butt with a calculator in three minutes. And I was so lost, I couldn't speak. See, before I met her, I called myself blissfully ignorant. That means I was ignorant. I didn't know no better, so I was happy being that way. Mm -hmm. But after I met her, I could no longer be blissfully ignorant. I could either be intentionally ignorant, or I could do something about it. Yeah, because now at this point, you, you know exactly how much you don't know. So it's like... How can you really sit there? It's uncomfortable to sit there and realize how much is actually going on around you that you don't understand. Like, I said to myself, self, huh? You stupid. Mm -hmm. you, you stupid. You stupid. There you go. <laughs> self, huh? You stupid. There you go. Because I, I finally ran across that point. And I knew I had to make a change. And it didn't matter that I know my, my circle's opinion was important. But it couldn't be more important to me getting myself right when I know good and well, good and ham well, I'm running wrong. Mm -hmm. So I had to get myself running right. And I did what it took to do that. And that's been about 22 years ago. Man, that's my whole 22, life. 22, yeah. 20 years ago, 22 years later, I'm on my own national corporation, which is now 11 years old. I've been the money man for seven, eight years. I've written three books. I do webinars, seminars, audios, etc. I speak finance. I talk junk about it all day long because I made my appointment. Now, most people summarily missed their appointment. What do I mean by missed their appointment? Because I had to figure out, when I say missed their appointment, people didn't know what I meant. So I'm going to tell you what I mean by missing their appointment. Number one, 
They didn't show up at the appointment at all, which is part of what I was guilty of. I was almost good, not going to show up at the appointment at all. That mm -hmm. was almost me. Number two, they physically arrived at the appointment, but the mind stayed at home. Yeah, they're not, they're not, you know, actually taking in any of the information they're receiving. Close-minded. Mm -hmm. I've seen that as missing the appointment. Because you sat there, you're there in body. That's yeah, but you're not in. actually there to learn. You're and, just there to say you was there. And I hate the people that show up aggressive. Mm -hmm. Which means they're lost. They need your help, but they're fighting about everything you say. And every industry has them, just like Jay was on yesterday. He's talking about, and the man told me there's no way you could buy a property with no money down. Look, I'm a real estate agent and a real estate investor. I know it can't be done. And Jay said, I've been doing it for 20 years. Look, I'm telling you, I've done it already. How you telling me something can't be done? And I'm telling you, I did. See, that's the point right there. <laughs> there, there, there it is. <laughs> That's a phrase for order as well. Order from Brooklyn, dead is. Yeah. That's, that's a celebrity, <laughs> dead is. You see, it's one thing if I ain't ever done it, but if I've been doing it and I'm doing it right now and I've done it for many years, and now I'm sitting with somebody that absolutely doesn't know how to do it, claiming it claim can't be done, the first thing I understand is they think that the world is limited, what, limited to what they know. But they yeah. can't shoot for it. How you doing? Long time no see. Well, nine times out of ten, they sitting there feeling just as lost and dumb as you did when you first spoke to that lady. But, the, but that feeling of being lost makes them uncomfortable, so they react aggressively. It's like, no, anything that I don't understand is impossible. And that's not you. They don't I like the fact that there's people out here that know more than them. One time. And look me straight now. I mean, just... Heck bent on dime mirror. Is that a new smoker out there? Mm -hmm. We got a new one. Oh, my God. Oh, that's my friend. I know her. Mm -hmm. Cool. But Heck bent on telling me, well, Don, you can't get all those tax monies back. Fool, I've been doing it for 15, 16 years straight, and they ain't slowed down at all. Like, if it's been You're working, I'm telling I'm me not what I'm now. already doing that I can't do. Oh, I'm sorry. You might be ignorant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Randall Howe Walker, how you doing? Good like, morning to you. I don't understand you. that. You're sitting here, and I'm, if you've told me you've done this already, then obviously I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, you can't do that, you can't do that. No. Obviously it can be done because it's done already, so I just need to watch you and see how you do it. So now I know how to do it, too. Bingo. But when they find you, they don't do it. No. Another thing, Mr. Appointment, another example. They arrived. They were attentive, but hesitated to take action. They procrastinated. Brother Chris, how you doing? And welcome. Yeah. Which means you showed up, but you didn't move anywhere. You're scared, like, oh, let me think about it. Or, oh, good pastor, let me pray on it. No, good and what they've been praying about their finances for years. Lord, sends them out to them about finances. But let me pray on it some more. Folks, at some point in time, you got to get off your knees and do something. Yeah. You got to get off your knees and do something. Like, what are they waiting for? A postcard from Jesus? They're Richard waiting for a postcard that? from Jesus, waiting for the media to come down. <laughs> They're waiting for the eclipse on the sun. What, are what kind of sign you need? You prayed for it, it showed up. Mm -hmm. That's just like the lady I was in police, when I was a police worker, right? They called the police. And I knocked on the door. You <laughs> called the police, you dialed 911. Who is it? Police. So you can't say police, let's say please what? Police. <laughs> you can find it out too. Please what? <laughs> yeah, you can say police. Please what? Police. <laughs> she asked me, well, how do I know you're the police? Ma'am, you dial 911. A police car is in front of your house and you hear a police radio blaring. I'll tell you what. Clearly, you don't need my help. I'm out here. Mm. Wait a minute. And I'm going to the like, why are you giving such a hard time about the, the help you asked for? Because when you call the Lord and you tell him you need help, and he sends the help, you pass your praying to. time. It's time for you to get in action. Mm -hmm. You do something, folks. You do something. You get up. You get off. You definitely pray do and they something. They ask for help, but they're not really looking for help. They're looking for a problem solver, a miracle worker. Well, no, that's not quite it. Get it done. They are looking for help. But they're looking for help on their terms. They want to dictate the nature of the help. You can't dictate the nature of the help. Well, they do. The help is well, you know, Melo, I want to be a business owner that makes billions of dollars in business and money, but I don't want to change my schedule. Well, See, they want on their your way. terms is why you in the predicament you are now. Thank you. Like, that's why, yeah, you've probably wanted to be a business owner for the last five years, but because you've been doing it your way, you're still on. So... 
obviously you got to work with somebody else and do it their way, especially if they're already doing it. Well, Lord, send me somebody helping my finances. And they had two choices. They could send Brother Kent. And Kent's very good, very, very super financial advisor on this radio. They could send Kent. Kent's white guy, very well dressed, former military, mm -hmm. Navy, I believe, very sharp, strong family ties and values and everything. They're sending Kent. Or they could send Don, who don't look like Kent. Well, they didn't expect to come looking like Don, so they said no. Yeah. They were looking for Kent. That it, because they, they want to realize. dictate the type of person they were sent to give the help. You don't get to <laughs> dictate that, folks. When you ask for help, the Lord will send the help, but he's not going to send the way you want to see it. He's going to send the way he wants to send it. You have to be able to recognize that it came there to help you because you asked for it. Or it could be the opposite. They may look for Don to walk in and he can't walk in the door. Now all of a sudden they want to turn him away. They want to turn him away. Well, he's the wrong race. We don't need him out here. No, you asked for help and Kent was sent to you. Mm -hmm. So why the heck are you fighting Kent instead of getting the help that you asked they for? Because they already had their there. own idea of how this help was going to come. Yes, that's the point. They, they pictured in their head how they it was going to work out. They pictured in their head. <laughs> they said, well, you know, I want to know about business. What, you seem this cute little Seminole Indian girl named Mella, she's supposed to be able to help me? Yeah. You see, they weren't <laughs> expecting that. They wanted somebody old and fat and slow Mm -hmm. That you know looked like a business person that was definitely less pretty than they were than they were, <laughs> and they wanted that person to come out, and yeah. definitely somebody with more than twenty some years of age on them. Yeah, it's like, what do you know? You only twenty one years. Yeah, old? <laughs> that's it. Because they want to dictate the nature of the person that sends that's sent to help them. Yeah, that's. So they want to do that. Y'all trifling. Other people procrastinate, and they are trifling. They are trifling. Other people, they missed because. They said no, waiting for, quote-unquote, the right opportunity. That is the opportunity. Usually defined as the easiest or the cheapest. It's defined as right. Yeah, people always try to get in on a good deal. They think they if they hold out, they hold out long enough, they're going to catch a good deal and then jump in as soon as they can. No, sometimes when, when it's presented to you, it's the only time you have to get it. In the Kent Shuford world, it's those people that time the market. Market timing. I was waiting for the right time, and it's just going up and going up and going up. And I said, just that right time, and I'll be just, a, just folks, everybody time tomorrow come out broke. <laughs> it does. It's, 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 he can tell you that. I ain't got to tell you. We both know that. And But they try to do it that way. They're trying to time that market. And get just, they do all that kind of crazy stuff. That's like gambling. It is gambling. Yes. Like, exactly. you risking it all. We're day trading is gambling, too. It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's the same thing. Let's get one more of what I mean by... Missed their appointment. They arrived and joined you. And they moved a single ounce or joined or done a single thing since then. Made no meetings, went to no appointments, didn't meet with you, barely answered the phone, ain't made a webinar, ain't come to a live meeting, ain't even been to their website. Do you know I had people, <laughs> I'm kidding, now my website, not the one I have now, but the previous one we had, it's a very complex website. It could tell when you logged in. Mm -hmm. It would tell the exact last day that you logged into your site. It would tell when you did that. And I could look at it and see the last, what was the last time Melo signed to her site? Well, how many times has Melo logged into her site? It could tell how many times and days and times you logged into I it. Know I logged into and when, <laughs> when a person has never logged in, it lists their date as 1800. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, because that's just uh, like. Arbitrary, Basic, way yeah. back, never you. So the day was 1800. I had people that had been in my corporation as members of ICON for three plus years and their website still said 1800. Which means they had never in three plus years, never ever gone to the website. That's like paying for an Amazon membership and you never go on Amazon. Or the Netflix subscription, you never watch the movie. Like, I don't get it. What's the purpose? If you never, if you don't go to get a person into a white paper. I have not seen in six years. I've been paying their membership for six straight years, and I have yet to hear or see or know anything about them. They get all notices that I do. I send out emails and texts out that I'm supposed to. I never hear a word from them. I have some that you only show up once a year. Once a year, you may get a call from them. Hey, Don, listen, I have lunch. Once a year. Mm -hmm. I know we have lunch for that one time. He didn't pay for the lunch. And I know it'd be 365 and one quarter days before I <laughs> yes, it, Folks, I'm just calling. That's the stuff that I see. This is what you do. So this is what I call missing an appointment. 
because they did not do any of what they were supposed to do to get there and absorb what they were supposed to do. They did nothing. Mm -hmm. They did not show. So everyone's appointed a person. That's someone that's in place that's supposed to be there to take you through where you're supposed to go. That's a person. I'll tell Lady Di's story. Lady Diana Morgan, CEO of Icon Success. Don Blackwell, president of Icon Success. We met roughly just about 18, 19, 20 years ago. One of those three. I don't know which. It's been a while. About as long as you've been alive, actually. Yeah, back when I was a baby. Yeah, yeah. when I just got here. <laughs> actually, close to 20. I know it's 19 and 20 years. Somewhere right. We met back then. I was doing a small seminar up in, in Salisbury, North Carolina. There were about 18 or so people who looked like me and you in the room. Most of them broke the $3 bill. One of them said, I want to change, do something to change my life. So one said, I'll make a difference. Mm -hmm. One. And she took two weeks. So I spoke to her, didn't hear from her for about two weeks. She called back and she called back and said, I bet you thought I forgot, forgot about you. I said, actually, I got busy. I hadn't thought about, because I've been running. I was running like crazy yeah. on freezing things. I didn't have time to look back and see what you were doing. I said, what have you been doing? She said, I've been checking you out. <laughs> Same thing, checking you out. <laughs> well, she worked at the bank at the time. And she was a teller. And she went over to the investment side because she'd never gone to the investment side until she heard me speak. In realistic, she said, I was trying to figure out if you were the devil. <laughs> well, she, she's still trying to figure it out 20 years later, actually. <laughs> but I was trying to figure out if you were the devil. And so she went over to the banking side and started questioning things I said. And they said, yeah, he's right. Yeah, he's right. Yeah, he's right. And then she went out and bought, you've heard of Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and those things like yeah. that? from you? Yeah, she heard from, heard about it from me. Well, she bought the two hundred dollar, rich dad, poor dad. What's up, brother Kenneth here from the great state of Kannapolis, Charles in the suburbs of Kannapolis. Yeah, right. Keep it in. She went out and bought the two hundred dollar tape set, cassette tapes, because CDs haven't been created yet. <laughs> she could have laughed. Look at this laugh she got. Cassette tape set. Now she had done for two weeks. She got with her bank. She went and put out the two hundred dollar cassette so tape set. She was set. researching. She was researching. She was doing better at checking, checking you out. To you show back up and girl. find out that I was right. And she joined. And that's been her last job. Since that time, she's been full-time business. She's a full partner in a real estate investment company, Easy Investment Properties. She was a full partner in our company that way. She was a full partner in our local financial education company called Rags to Riches. She's full part of our national financial education company called Icon of Success. In that time, she's become real estate agent, real estate broker, mortgage, insurance, credit, debt, investments, taxes, amortization. She writes books. She does webinars, audios, live seminars. That's been an 18 to 20 year transition. When I met her, she had none. Because I had a room full of 18 people who looked like me and you I walked out with. One. And obviously you could tell how invested she was just from her, just from that checking you out period. Actually, we knew from the look we made when we went to the meeting itself. Because I could tell there was somebody I was supposed to meet. And I've been able to tell that this person signed me for the, and some of them are signed for a period, some of them are signed for a life. Mm -hmm. But I know it's an assignment that has to be made. And I know when I meet somebody that way. 20 years, that's a, that's a I'll feel it. So she had none of that in place. In fact, she was working as a part-time bank teller with divorce from her husband with two small kids. Mm -hmm. With spells broken 13 different languages, right? Yeah. Okay, got it. Not totally. Yeah. But she actually was the only person I walked out with from that meeting. And I'll tell you how I know it's a divine appointment because she wasn't supposed to be there. It was not her church. She was visiting a sister church of her church, and then she and the pastor of that church didn't get along. She went as a favor to her pastor to go she to really his church. didn't even need to be there. So she was a transplant that wasn't supposed to be there. Was the only person I walked out with was the person that actually changed the next 20 years of my life. Crazy, I think. And I changed the next 20 years of hers. Because a person, a place, and a time, an action. A person. She was supposed to meet Don. I was supposed to meet her. A place. We're supposed to meet there at that church. We're supposed to join in a little network marketing company we were building back then. We're supposed to form a real estate investment company, Ease Investment Properties. We're supposed to 
start a local financial education company called Rex Riches. We were supposed to start on National Corporation 11 years ago and get that done. I didn't even think about having a mortgage insurance. I got mortgage license, insurance license, <laughs> and all the rest of the stuff behind that because it was supposed to happen at that place. And you see, she didn't just say after she met you in the church and y'all had y'all meeting, she didn't say, oh, let me pray on it. No, she went and she already did the work. She researched she and spent twenty more dollars. She looked it up. She's like, "Hey, I need to make sure you're right." And then you were. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, "Okay, cool. Obviously, this is where I need to be, and this is who I need to think up with." And I did almost get it fired from a job. <laughs> almost. For what? For asking too many questions? No. You see what? For her start. What had happened was nothing. Nothing good ever comes after whatever happened was. Mm-mm. I explained her investments and how to read returns and how to understand returns on investments. And she uh, saw so what she, she could get the 15, 20, 25% returns and things. I showed her over and over again, you could find that. And she said, Oh my gosh, so she's in the bank. She was in the bank one day, and this guy was speaking with one of the founder representatives, and he said, Well, you know, it's a better return you can get for my money. And the bank gave the typical bank line. Well, you know, the market's kind of tough. It's been tough for everybody. The most you can find is maybe one. Two percent, maybe, because the market has been crashing. It's been rough that way. And all of a sudden, she put out a money magazine and showed him that 15, 20, 25 percent, et cetera. And he went the next day and took his $200,000 out of the bank. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, that's enough to get a fire right there. She was <laughs> <laughs> But, I mean, it's, at least she almost got fired for a good reason. She right? almost got fired for a good reason, yes. Mm-hmm. But it's funny. So yes, you got a person that somebody's supposed to meet. There's a place you're supposed to bring it together and bring it all in place and do it there. There's a time. There's a season that's supposed to be done, folks. Everything has a season. I can be your mentor, but I'm not a permanent mentor. I'm here for a season. And when you've got a mentor that's willing to talk to you and pay into you and give into you and feed into you, understand he's here for a season. season. And once that season is gone, it's done. Because the idea is that you will outgrow. You. Or he's going to outgrow you. You. One or two is going to happen. Way. It's a season. So if you're in that season, you're fortunate enough to have a mentor that will talk to you. Because most financial mentors don't talk to you. Mm-hmm. I want a few that does want to teach you what I know. While you got that mentor, folks, you're getting that webinar tonight at 9. Okay. You drain that game. thing, boy. You drain you that thing. Questions. I like ask that. Them questions. You drain it. You get everything <laughs> you get out of it because you got a mentor that's not just out to take money from you. He's out to teach you what he knows. Mm, you get as much of that as you can while you can. For as long as he's going to be there, you soak it up because one day the Lord may call me home. One day he may just say, Don, that's enough of this arena. Go someplace else. And people may think, oh, you know, that's taking event. No. If a men- the mentors, they actually want to help you. So if you are sitting there asking questions and questions and you digging into it, that goes to show them that you're actually putting forth interest into the effort that they're giving you. Absolutely like, So they actually appreciate it. They want you to ask questions and they want you because they want you to grow. They don't want to waste their time with you. They're not going to sit here talking to somebody that ain't going to do nothing with it. Absolutely. That's <laughs> 10,000% the correct. That's why Jay, and I love Jay Parker, Jay Parker Network. He calls his business office, his office hours, 5.30 to 7.30, Monday through Friday, 5.30 a.m. to 7.30 a.m., Monday through Friday, 6 to 8 a.m. on Saturday. That's when he does his rise and grind and walks for five miles. If you want to talk to him, that's his office hours. <laughs> well, you see, he spent a whole bunch of dinner time and everything else, spending time with people talking and imparting information, imparting information, imparting information, and then two months later, they're after the game. So he's wasted all that time and can't get it back again. Mm-hmm. So he said, if you're going to meet me, you meet me at my business hours.